Hey, how's it going? Welcome back. So in today's video, I wanted to do a refresh course on Mantine. Uh, it's been a about a year or so since I made my last video and that there's been a lot of updates and my previous playlist is no longer applicable. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through the exact same format as we did for the previous course. However, we're going to be going through the intricacies of the new updates that's been added. Um, most of the components don't work in the previous GitHub repo. So we're going to make a brand new one and we're just going to be going from there. So we're going to learn about the Mantine provider, dark mode, light mode, individual um, individual components uh, and the custom plugin libraries as well. And also all the new items that have been brought to this library. So before we do get started, I want to just talk a little bit about what this library is all about. So what you can do is you can click on the link below to go to the documentation. And basically what Mantine is, it is a TypeScript based um, open source library that works on many different frameworks such as Next.js, Remix, Redwood, um, a lot of these things that I happen to work with, but they come with more than 100 components out of the box. They're pretty, uh, I think the ver word is verbose, they're pretty uh, detailed in how to work with them, and I do like them. Um, they're a lot more different than what comes out of the box, and such as Material UI, you know, you have the same type of components. You see the same type of atmosphere in a lot of the websites because they're running material. Uh, with Mantine, you're seeing a little bit of a difference in the design aspect of what your website can look like. Um, so they have over 100 uh, components. And so not just with the components itself, Mantine also does a wonderful job in implementing itself with different type of plugins. Um, so these are actually plugins based off of other NPM packages that Mantine has built upon. Um, so you have date pickers, which is pretty good. I like it. Um, we're going to be learning about how to use this as well. And then we have rich text editor. I can't quite remember what the NPM for this was, but it's based off of tip tap dot dev. Oh, sorry. It's based off of uh, rich text editor based on tip tap dot dev. And uh, then after that, it runs the Embla based carousel. This is a pretty cool carousel as well. Um, it's really easy to implement as well. I think I have a tutorial on how to use that. Um, and they do a wonderful job with dark mode and light mode. We're also going to be covering how to work with that as well. The customization is fantastic. I love the fact that a lot of the components in this library you can actually play around with in the actual uh, documentation itself. And then you have the code that gets appeared right here as well. And then after that style overriding, uh, we are going to also be learning about how to work with this for most of the components. But Mantine does a very good job in learning about how to do that. And then they also have this right here where you can explore the different type of responsive components that they have, such as navbar, headers, footers, let me zoom in a little bit more, uh, grids, user info, all this sort of good jazz. And if you click on one of these such as stats, you can see um, some examples of those components in action and then you click on code and you can just pretty much copy exactly the code from what it's based off of. And then after that, they have something called the hooks. So Mantang does a really good job with the fact that they implement something called Mantine hooks, which are short, easy ways for you to implement hooks into your application. So I, I think the last time I worked on this, there was a couple of hooks such as randomly generated IDs, um, uh, using full screen or not, such as this. It sort of got out of the screen there, but if you click on this, there is a uh, there's a hook that comes right out of the box called use full screen, and then you can just implement it into your app very easily. You can use use move and um, as a hook as well. And it does a really good job with uh, the documentation for the hooks as well to figure out how to actually work with it. And then after that, uh, they give you some templates that you can work off of. So if you're working in Next, Byte, Remix, Redwood, or Gatsby, you can go ahead and just select any one of these and then just use any of the templates that's available. But however, in our case, we are actually going to be uh, doing it right out of the box uh, using TypeScript and React. Um, and then you can join their community. Their community is very, very good. Uh, their Discord is fantastic. Um, I've been a part of it. I haven't really looked at it much, but they do a wonderful job with feedback and uh, answering questions. So, you know, go ahead and follow them um, on Twitter and Discord and all that sort of good jazz. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and actually install this bad boy in a React TypeScript app and go from there. Okie dokie. So, what we're going to be doing is from this home page, we're going to click on Get Started. 
And we're going to notice that the actual template that we want to go with isn't available inside of the actual documentation. And that's perfectly fine. You know, if you're trying to work in Next.js or Byte or Remix or Gatsby, the tutorials should be pretty much the exact same. However, what we're going to be running through is create React app. It's not available here, but we're going to do it on ourselves. So what I did was I opened up the documentation for create React app, and we're going to be using the TypeScript version of this. Now, a little bit, a couple of prerequisites that you're going to need gonna need um, Node.js installed and that's pretty much it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go ahead and copy this snippet of code right here that says npx create react app dash my app dash dash template and then TypeScript. So inside of my terminal I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it. Now before I press enter I'm gonna change the name of my app to be Mantine Course V seven V seven like so perfect so now that that's installed what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the dependencies for Mantine so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually install all of them because we're most likely gonna be doing tutorials on pretty much all of these components throughout this uh, updated course so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the code and then inside of my VS code I'm going to do CD and go into my Mantine course v7 and then just go ahead and paste the snippet of code but I'm going to get rid of where it says the 200 and all that sort of weird junk. So that's going to install all of the dependencies that we need and then we're also going to install the post CSS plugin. I've never used it before but it'll be interesting to, uh, to implement it with. Alrighty so now that that's all installed the next thing we're going to be doing is installing the post CSS. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this snippet of code right here. And just go ahead and paste it right there. We're going to get rid of these weird symbols. There we go. And then it says that we need to create a post CSS config file in the root of our application. So that's what I'll do is right here. I'm going to create a new file. So I'll do is touch. What is it called? Post CSS dot config dot JS. Open that bad boy up. And then we're just going to go ahead and paste in the module exports that it's saying to this plugin. Uh, I'm assuming this is only for breakpoints so far, but we can add to it as we want to go along. Alrighty, so the next thing that we need to do is within our index.tsx file, we're going to be encapsulating our entire app within something called Mantine Provider. So what I'll do is right here, I'll just import Mantine Provider, cut that, paste that bad boy like that right there. And then we also need to import it from Mantine. So at the very top of the file right here, it's going to go and import it like so. And then we'll also put in our theme. So any sort of themes that we want to override, we can just put them in here. And then we also need to pass it as a prop right here. So I'll do theme is equal to theme. There we go. And then after that, this is optional. Um, but if your application is going to require server side rendering, you need to import color scheme script. However, we're not worrying anything about server side rendering for this course. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our app.tsx file. And we're just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this section inside of the div. And just to test that everything is working, I'm going to go ahead and add a button just to check that everything is working. So let's see if we can find button right there. And then we're just going to go ahead and import this button right into here. And I was saying that we also have to import it from Mantine Core, which is what we'll do right there. Save it. And now let's go ahead and run npm start and let it work its magic. And so after testing it out, we see that we just have a regular button, but nothing is breaking. The reason that we have a regular button is because we forgot to import the style CSS right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and put it into the um, main file of our project. So in our index.tsx file, save it. And now if we refresh the page, we'll see that we have the button coming in from Mantine. Alrighty, so that concludes this tutorial. In the next one, we're going to be talking about setting up a app shell so that we can actually uh, display all of the individual components and the hooks that we're going to be working with. So stay tuned for that tutorial. 
and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.